This video will serve as an introduction to chapter 2, which deals with motion along a straight line. So in this chapter, we're going to be looking at objects that are moving in a straight line. This is also sometimes referred to as one-dimensional motion. One of the assumptions that we're going to have is that objects are only moving in a straight line. And what we mean by that is think of a car that's fixed to move on a railroad track. It can move back and forth along the track, but it can't turn off the track. It's fixed to move back and forth along a straight line. A person pacing back and forth would also be an example of something that's moving in a straight line. Also, we're going to be looking only at the motion itself. What we're going to be focusing on is something called kinematics. Kinematics is a description of how the object is moving. In kinematics, we'll be looking at things like the location of the object, where it's located at. We're going to look at things like how fast is the object moving. Or we'll be looking at is the object speeding up or is it slowing down. In later chapters, we'll be focusing on the causes of the changes in motion. We're going to look be looking at why the object moves the way that it does. And this is referred to as dynamics. And finally, in this chapter, we'll be treating objects as point particles that are moving back and forth. This way, we don't have to worry about, as a person is walking back and forth, the swing of their arms and their legs. We're just going to look at them as a point that moves back and forth um, to try and make the motion be as simple as possible at first. The first idea that's important is to talk about the position of the object. This is where the object is located. This is telling us where the object is at. And the position is measured relative to some reference point or origin. And so for motion in a straight line, we set up a number line and all of the positions on the number line refer to the position of the object. We set a spot to be where the position is zero. Sometimes this will be given to us. Often we'll choose where the origin will be. If you think about driving along a highway, the mile markers at the side of the road, those are telling you your position relative to the state line. Uh, the state line is the origin, and then each of the mile markers is telling you how many miles you are from that state line. With a number line, as you set it up, you have one side of the origin where the numbers are positive, and one side of the origin where the numbers are negative. Remember, in physics, all of our numbers will have units, so these positions are measured in meters, and so it's how many meters away from the origin we are. And negative positions mean that it's on one side of the origin. Positive positions mean that it's on the opposite side of the origin. We set things up so that the positive direction is a certain direction. Uh, usually the convention is to let right be the positive direction, so as you move to the right, the positions will be getting bigger and bigger. As you move to the left, the positions will be getting smaller and smaller. As we set this up, the position increases as we move in the positive x direction along the number line. Besides looking at where an object is located, we're also often interested in something called the displacement of the object. The displacement is the change in position of the object. And so the way that that's written, we use this notation delta x. This Greek symbol delta means change in, so the change in x. x was our position, so the change in position. This is defined as x2, which is the later position. minus x1, which is the earlier position.
and the way that you calculate the displacement is you take the later position and you subtract the earlier position. So the displacement is always between two points in space. And so we have this person that's walking along a straight line. Let's say that the person starts at a position of two meters. And he walks along this line, and a little bit later, his position is five meters. If we wanted to calculate his displacement, the displacement would be five meters minus two meters, or positive three meters. The fact that it's positive means that he moved to a bigger position. He moved in the positive x direction. Now one thing that's important to notice is all that matters is what the beginning and ending positions were. You're measuring the displacement between two points and so it only depends on those two points. This person could have walked around and back and around and back and if I wanted the displacement between the position of two meters and five meters, I don't care about where he moved in between, I just use those two points. That would still be the same displacement of positive three meters. If I had him start again at two meters, but now he walked to the left, and a little bit later he was at a position of negative one meter, if I went to calculate the displacement, the displacement would be the later position of negative one meter minus the earlier position of positive two meters. So his displacement would be negative three meters. Here, the fact that the displacement is negative, it means that his position got smaller. This negative sign means that he moved in the negative x direction. Distance is a quantity that you're more used to looking at. Distance is just how far an object has moved. Distance is something that is referred to as a scalar. A scalar is a quantity that only has a magnitude. A magnitude tells us how big the quantity is. the distance that an object moves will always be positive. Now it's important to note not all scalars will always be positive. But here when we look at distance, distance is defined as a positive quantity. Distance is measured in meters. So the units for distance will be meters and the distance traveled, that's the absolute value of the path length that's traveled. So if we started at position A and we moved to position B, so let's say that we moved 10 meters to position B and then we moved back 4 meters to position C, if I looked at the distance traveled in this, I don't care which direction I was moving. The distance travel going from A to B to C would be 14 meters. That's what we mean when we say it's the absolute value of the path length traveled. We don't care what direction we're traveling. We keep adding things up. In a car, the odometer of the car that tells you how far you traveled, that gives you the distance traveled. Distance is a more familiar concept. When you look at a car driving along, you're looking at distance. Um, you're, you're usually interested in how far you have traveled, which is the distance that you have traveled. That is different than displacement. So again, displacement is what we introduced a couple of slides ago. So displacement is something that's referred to as a vector quantity. So a vector quantity 
is a quantity that has a magnitude, which again is how big the quantity is. But it also has a direction. So a vector is a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction. For displacement, the magnitude is how far apart the two positions are, and the direction is what direction you traveled going from one position to the other. In one dimension, displacement can be described as positive or negative, but a positive displacement really means in the positive x direction. So we saw in the example that we did a couple of slides ago, if a displacement was positive, it meant that you moved to a bigger position, which meant that you moved in the positive x direction. If the displacement is negative, that means that you moved in the negative x direction. You moved to a smaller position. The position got smaller. Displacement, just like distance, is measured in meters. So both of them are lengths, so we measure them in meters. But there is a difference in what length they're measuring. Again, displacement is the difference between a later position, x2, and an earlier position, x1. Again, we don't care how the object moved from x1 to x2. All we care about are those two points. You'll always be asked to find the displacement between these two points. And one of the ways that we describe displacement is with a vector. If I say that something moved from the position x1 to the position x2, one of the ways that I represent that displacement is with an arrow. So we're going to see that vectors are going to be represented with arrows and the length of the arrow is going to represent the magnitude of the vector and the direction that the arrow points is going to represent the direction of the vector. In later videos we'll be getting into other things like how fast an object is going, how quickly its velocity is changing, differences between speed and velocity, but this is an introduction to some of the key ideas that we'll be looking at for the rest of the school year.